Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, Lisa, what's up, Lisa? Hi, Bella. Hi, Doctor. Hello, Bella. sweetie. What's going on? Oh, not much. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, I saw you back at the Viper Room in October with my sis. Okay. Uh, shaking my hips in the back by BAM and stuff, and you guys are really great. Thank you. Thank you. It was, uh, it was a weird night. Was Why it? Was well, the PA broke down, and, and uh, I told the whole audience, audience to have a cigarette break. Oh, so, yeah. Like, it was like 100 people going outside for wow. a smoke until when they fixed the whole thing. So Nice. Yeah, so. I know. That's awesome how you care so much about the sound and everything, like, all the time at all the shows. Well, come on, we're musicians. I know, exactly. Like, that's, I respect that. That's What's your cool. question, Lisa? Yeah, my question was... Um, so many of our callers just want to talk to you. Hang on a second, time. Lisa. Hold on, Lisa. You're rolling here. So many of our callers are just enjoying talking. They're just, they're just hanging. They're just enjoying. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm talking to Villa. It's the greatest. Let's just, everybody, I'm Look, talking to Villa. we got plenty of time anyway. Yeah. So. so what's the question, Lisa? Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I just wanted to know why you had May tattooed on your chest. May? Um, uh, that's a long story. Basically, I'm a big fan of uh, SpongeBob SquarePants. And the little tiny pet he has, um, pa um, what is it called? Gary. Gary, yeah. It just meow. says, the only thing he says is meow. And uh, basically... Except one time he spoke. Did he? In a kind of a dream. And, oh, and he cool. had a, an English accent, kind of like yours. What? He did. Yeah. Oh, I haven't seen that dream. one. I haven't he, seen that one. His voice sounded very much like yours, as a matter of oh fact, right? Oh, my God. Right? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to rename myself. You know? And he was very erudite, very very learned, and he had lots of things to talk about in terms of literature. And <laughs> Excellent. But the thing is that... um. It's a it's a long story. It's uh, my fiance loves Ga Gary and SpongeBob as much as I do, and uh, and uh, because what he says nearly sounds in Finnish like "mau," which doesn't mean anything. We so, wait, wait, wait. What, SpongeBob sounds like that? No, no. The the um oh, the meow. Gary oh. the meow thing. I never heard it as meow. I heard it, heard it always like meow. Right, right. Which is meow. In, in Finnish, you write it with, uh, like, May, but with uh, two dots on, on top of A. Oh, that's damn funny. And, and, uh, and uh, we, for some reason, when, when people are in love, they tend to call each other with stupid names. And I tend to call her Puss, Meow, <laughs> or Gary. So, uh, that's the whole story. Does she speak English? Yes, she does. So, she, 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 the Gary and the Puss make sense to her. Yeah. yeah, yeah, most definitely, okay. most definitely. But the meow made sense to know of neither, of you, <laughs> which I love. It became May. Fantastic, fantastic. Here is uh, another Jennifer. What's up, Jennifer? You on with Ville Bill Light? <laughs> that was pretty good. Hi, okay. how are you, Billy? Doing good, thank you very much. How about yourself? Good, I'm doing very well, thank you. What mm -hmm. an opportunity. Um, Basically, it was not necessarily a question. I just wanted to say in reference to something that was spoken about prior to the airing of this show. Um, Dr. Drew couldn't get his head wrapped around, I guess, what your music was like. And for me, I just wanted to say it's kind of like, why do we like the blues? You know, it, it makes you happy. It, right. It's unique. It, yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's very cathartic. And, yeah. That's the whole reason <sighs> to cleanse your soul of, of, uh, of the bad things. You know, when I'm feeling bad, I'm listening to Black Sabbath. Right. It's and it makes me happy. Exactly. It's the same effect. It's the same effect. And I just want yeah. to say thank you. I've gone through a lot of changes the past few years, and when I kind of stumbled across your music, I just absolutely flipped and was so thrilled to death that there was some newer music out there that really just made made a mark and made a statement and uh, was intelligent lyrics and, and beautiful music. And um, thank you, basically, is all I wanted to say. I'm blushing here. Thank you very much. All right, we're going to switch gears a little bit and get more towards the Loveline calls. This is Isla. Isla, what's up? Hi, Dr. Drew. Um, first time caller. Took me forever to get through. Um, Sorry. My boyfriend and I have been going out for about a year and a half now, and when we first started going out, he was really affectionate, and as time has worn on, he's gotten, I don't know, it's not really distant so much as, you know, he we're in public and he doesn't want to hold my hand, or if he does, he acts like it's a chore how long? Have, how long have you guys been together? Year and a half. About a, about a year and a half. And, and how old is he? He's nineteen. Huh? Is do you think maybe this thing's winding down a bit? I don't even. I don't think it's winding down. Like we just got an apartment together, and Ooh. like, well, we already had an apartment together. We just moved, and well, uh, like. Well, men are exactly like that. They, you know, when if you know they start being really affectionate, and they really easily 
start thinking takes uh, things for granted. Hey, you know, when when the biology, I'm like, I'm like that. When the volume in the biology turns down, meaning yeah. the routine kind of settles in, exactly. the kind of drive to touch is less. Yeah, and men yeah. tend to want to wander, not necessarily wander away from the relationship, but just sort of do the guy thing, and they're not feeling quite as touchy. Well, he, the thing right? is, when he gets really, and this is going to sound weird but when he gets really drunk like he gets really emotional and he's like you don't understand how much i love you and he has no filter he just <laughs> he's really affectionate when he's drunk or when it's just us at home how often is he ju- drunk uh not very okay like maybe all right so fine so so he doesn't like uh, public displays of affection and now that he's sort of in the routine he's less sort of driven to do so and there you go okay all right. Yeah, I, I, just I just kick, him, kick him in the balls and give him uh, give him uh, vodka IV. It's gonna be good. <laughs> this Ville Ville is a, a, a sort of it's, it's Ville's solution for most things. <laughs> Kicking the nuts and uh, IV of vodka. <laughs> just just saying. Uh, Trevor, what's up, buddy? Hey, Doctor Drew, how you doing? Good. Good. Um, listen, I've been. Uh, I guess I've kind of come to the realization I've been like an alcoholic. You know, there's alcohol in my family. Mm-hmm. Uh, it took me a long time to get sober. I've been sober for like seven months. But cool. um, kind of the, the rumor around, you know, different programs and stuff like that is that alcoholics are physiologically different than normal Yeah, gen- completely, genetically different. In fact, there's going to be an over-the-counter genetic test available in about two months. Just talking to the doctor at UCLA that sort of worked on this, called the A1 allele test, that can tell you if you have one of the major genes responsible for this disease. There are a series of genes that have been associated with it. Basically, it is a, it's a brain uh, disorder or brain disposition that uh, predisposes to be very uh, attracted to thrill and to have a great intolerance of, of uh, anxiety and intolerance of lack of stimulation and to be rather sensitive. There's all kinds of little features through this. And uh, one of the things that happens is if you have this kind of a brain, if you cross a certain threshold with alcohol or substances, the drive systems become altered in such a way that all the motivational the systems of the brain become focused on the pursuit of the drug. So things like reproduction and going to work and your family and your friends all that don't aren't become far less important than gratifying that drive so how would i find out for sure like if that's really the case i mean if i didn't have that gene or if i wasn't you know, trevor if you if you having you listen here here's the definition family history which you've given us that right ongoing use in the face of adverse consequence which i'm sure you have that story Yes. And and denial, which is what you're struggling with right now. <laughs> so there you go. Okay. That's the disease. And if uh, I can predict with very high accuracy that you have the gene based on that. And if you want to look for that test to confirm it when it comes out in a couple of months, you're certainly welcome to do so. Yeah. Just just curious, you know. But it is like it is a process, and it is something that I don't think that you. Uh, for me, I don't. I haven't gotten through it all. You know, even in the last few months. But uh, yeah, you've you got know. to really. You've got to really capitulate to this whole thing. And if you haven't capitulated, you know, you may not be ready. Maybe you have to go test it again on your own. Rachel, what's up? Hi, I just had a quick question. 